Hi, my name is Chad MacArthur. I'm an R&D scientist here at Thermo Fisher Scientific. Uh, thanks for joining us at 24 Hours of Stem Cells. Today I'm going to be showing you how to use uh, EDTA to passage your pluripotent stem cells cultured in uh, essential eight medium. So EDTA is a, uh, a non-enzymatic, gentle way to passage your cells. And EDTA works by chelating divalent cations, and this disrupts the function of cell adhesion molecules, allowing you to harvest your cells. So uh, why don't we take a look at what we'll need to get started. So uh, what we need is uh, the cells that we're going to passage, which I've got right here. And we also need our uh, plate that the cells are going to be passaged into. So this should be pre-coated with the, the matrix of your choosing. Uh, in this case, we're going to be using uh, vitronectin, but other choices include Geltrex or Laminin 521. Uh, what we also need is DPBS without calcium and magnesium, and that's to wash our cells. We also need a uh, 0.5 millimolar solution of EDTA, and that should be made up using this same DPBS without calcium and magnesium. And last, we need essential eight medium, which has been pre-warmed to room temperature. Remember, uh, it's best to not warm up ED, uh, essential eight in the water bath or the incubator. We want to just leave it out at room temperature for 30 to 60 minutes to let it, uh, to let it warm up. So uh, once we have everything that we need, um, why don't we take a look at the cells? And so, um, Ideally, you want your cells to be about uh, 70 to 80 percent confluent when they're ready to passage. You don't want your cells to to be 100 percent confluent. Um, so I'll show you a few different example densities. Um, so this this is the one I'm going to passage today. <clears throat> it looks it looks pretty good. Um, you know, you want to still be able to see some spaces between between the colonies. Like I said, you don't want a complete monolayer. Um, and so this, this looks about what we want. Uh, for example, of underconfluent, here's some cells that were plated at a little bit lower density, and you can see there's still plenty of room to grow. So for this one, I would wait at least another day until, until you want to go ahead and pass it to that one. Um, and for another example, here's cells that are completely overgrown and 100% confluent. You can see there's, there's no space in between any of the colonies maybe a little bit here and there, but uh, pretty much 100% confluent. So um, this is what you want to avoid. You know, these cells should have been passaged yesterday or, or, or possibly the day before that. If you do find that your cells are 100% confluent, um, it, it, may, it may take longer to incubate the cells in EDTA to, to really get them off. And, and you may find that the, uh, the recovery the next day is a little bit lower than normal. <clears throat> um, so another thing you want to check uh, once you've verified how uh, how dense the cells are, is is uh, you want to verify their morphology, right? You want to you want to make sure that they are maintaining pluripotency. So um, so basically, you want to look for any differentiated areas, any dark spots, any any cells that look like they're differentiating. But um, I'm seeing mostly the hallmarks of pluripotent cell morphology here. You know, nice uh, defined boundaries and and nice tight compact cells within the colonies. Um, if you do find any areas of differentiation, you do have the option of um, going in there and cleaning it out. Um, you know, assuming you have a microscope in the hood like this, but you could take a P200 and kind of go in there. You know, I, I can't really find any differentiated areas in this culture, but if there was, you just kind of go in there and scratch it out. So, once you've... Uh, confirm that your cells are ready to passage and that you don't see any areas of differentiation or that you've cleaned those areas up, um, it, we're ready to start the protocol. So <clears throat> the first thing we want to do is wash the cells twice with DPBS. And this will get rid of any uh, residual calcium or magnesium um, because if that's still there, that'll interfere with EDTA working on your cells to, uh, to allow dissociation. So. We're going to wash twice with DPBS. So first, we're going to aspirate the media. And then we're going to add about two or three mils of 
DPBS. And try to add it gently so we don't disrupt our cells. So we just add that. You don't really have to let it sit on there for very long. And we're going to aspirate and add two more mils of DPBS. Okay, I've got a, let's see. I've got a slow aspirator today. Hmm, there we go. All right, so we'll add one more wash. And I do highly recommend you wash twice. You're really going to see better results. Uh, if you don't wash twice, it's probably going probably to be a lot harder to get your cells off the plate. See how this works. All right, aspirate that. That's better. And now we're going to add our EDTA solution. So I usually add one mil for each well of a six well plate. Five millimolar EDTA. We'll start the timer, and so I'm going to incubate this at 37. So uh, you do have the option of incubating either at uh, room temperature, which will typically take about five to seven minutes. Or you can incubate in the incubator at 37, and that usually takes about three to four minutes. Uh, no, no real difference. It just depends on your preference. I like 37 because it's faster. But uh, you know, if you want to do room temperature, that's perfectly fine. It's just going to take a little bit longer. Um, so um, while we're waiting, we can talk about uh, split ratios. So uh, nor you know, there's a wide range of split ratios that you may want to use depending on your cell type and uh, the matrix that those cells are, be cul are being cultured on. Uh, and it's somewhat um, empirical. You kind of got to just play around and, and figure out the optimal density for you. Uh, we usually say to start somewhere between 1 to 4 and 1 to 8, and then kind of go from there. Uh, especially if you're working with a new cell line, you may want to initially try to plate a few different densities, uh, you know, 1 to 4, 1 to 6, 1 to 8, 1 to 12, something like that, and then see which one works best for you. We usually stick with about one to six, and we culture our cell, cells every uh, three to four days, um, and that seems to work well for us. But, um, but you, yeah, like I said, you will see some variations depending on the on the cell type and uh, and, and what matrix those cells are being coded on are being cultured on. Um, also, as far as incubation time goes, like I said, uh, I normally just stick with four minutes at 37, uh, but you may find again that that you need to kind of play around with that. Um, so basically, when you go to when you go to harvest your cells, you know if they come off way too easily, like you barely even have to, to look at them and they come off the plate, then uh, then you probably incubated too long and you want to next time shorten your incubation time. Uh, on the on the other side, if you if you go and you try to harvest your cells and you're trying really hard and you're pipetting and they just won't come off the plate, uh, that means you probably should incubate for longer next time. So um, you know again, you might just have to kind of play around and, and see which which uh, which one works best for you. But I think four minutes at 37 or seven minutes at room temperature is, is a good starting place, and you kind of and you can adjust from there. Um, so while we're waiting, another thing we should do is get our plate ready. So um, so like I said, I have a six wall plate here. It's been uh, pre coated with vitronectin, so I typically coat for about uh, 60 minutes at 37, and so that's already been coated. So what we want to do is we're going to aspirate the vitronectin solution. And, um, and then we're going to add uh, essentially media in there. We're just going to add a little bit so the wells don't dry out. So we'll um, aspirate the coating solution. And you don't really need to wash afterwards. It's not necessary. So we're just going to aspirate this. And 
And then, like I said, we're going to add just one mil of essential eight, just so the plate doesn't dry out. One mil to each bowl. And so typically uh, in a six wheel plate, you want a total volume of about two mLs. So since we have one in here, then when it time, comes time to add our cells, uh, we want to add our cells at about one mil per well. Um, and so since I said a one to six plate ratio is probably ideal here, we'll collect our cells in a total volume of six mils and put one mil into each well, and that'll give us a one to six. All right, so we're coming up on four minutes. Why don't we take a look? <clears throat> and so um, you can see the cells definitely look different, right? I mean, here's a, a well that wasn't treated, and here's a well that has been treated. What you'll notice is just a lot of... Um, kind of white space uh, coming up between the cells within the colonies, you can see, um, which means that they're, they're dissociating. Now it's hard to know, you know, you can't necessarily look at it and know, okay, it's ready. I still say just go with the times I recommended. Um, but you can at least look at this and say, okay, well, EDTA is doing something. Hopefully they're going to come off. So uh, we want to aspirate the EDTA solution. Now, as I said, hopefully your cells aren't already floating. Uh, when you aspirate the EDTA solution. If they are, you've incubated too long, go shorter next time. Um, but so my cells didn't come off there, so that's good. So now we're gonna add um, three mils of essentially medium to lift the cells up. And so they should come off relatively easily. And what we want to do is we just hold the plate at an angle and kind of just dispense the media across the surface of the well. And hopefully, as we do that, the cells come off pretty easily, and they are. Um, so, you know, if you have to pipe that a lot to get the cells off, you probably should have incubated a little bit longer. Um, and so we want to keep our pipetting down to a minimum. Um, okay, I just realized I did not prepare well. All right, I need a tube to put these cells into, which I did not have. So, bear with me. All right. All right. Sorry about that. So normally you would have a tube in the hood ready to go. But as I said, we're going to take the cells, put them into that tube that was already in your hood, and then we're going to wash the well out one time with uh, three more mils of EDTA. Or, I'm sorry, essentially medium. So three more mils to so collect any leftover cells, and so. Uh, as you're collecting the cells, you want to avoid pipetting up and down too many times. Uh, you know, every time you pipette up and down, you're breaking the cells up into smaller clumps. And you don't want those clumps to be too small. All right, so we're going to add this to our cells. And then we're just going to go up and down a couple times. We just want to kind of evenly resuspend the cells and break up any large clumps. Again, over pipetting here, um, you want to avoid because... That can, uh, that can lead to clumps that are too small. And if the clumps are too small, the cells just won't, uh, you won't have very good recovery. So as I said, six mils, one to six uh, split. So we're gonna add one mil to each well. All right. So, and as soon as you're done adding the cells, you wanna make sure to give it a little shake um, cells passage this way, uh, you know, as soon as you start adding the media back, the EDTA, the effects of EDTA are reversed, so the cells will stick to the plate pretty quickly after you, after you add them. So you want to make sure you give it a little shake to, to spread the cells out as soon as you can. Um, so I'm going to return this to the incubator.
And when you put it in, I would give it one more little shake just to make sure the cells haven't pooled in the middle. And that's pretty much it. I'll put this one back too since we're done with that. And that one. But it's that simple. Okay, and we're all done. So, uh, since we're all done, I think we're going to take some uh, questions from the, from the audience. All right. Thank you very much for that demonstration, Chad. Uh, definitely great guidance for such a routine and critical part of pluripotent stem cell workflow. Some of our participants do have questions to further dig in or just for clarifications. As such, we will now begin our Q&A session. I am Joanna Asper, and like Chad, I work on Thermo Fisher's stem cell products. I will be moderating this Q&A session. Participants, if you haven't yet, please type and send in your questions. In the meantime, we do have um, a number of questions already. Okay. So the, I'll do this one first because it's connected to something you showed or explained earlier, um, but maybe just for clarification and additional information. Is it advisable to extend the duration of EDTA treatment if the cells don't come off? But I think more to that point, is there such a thing as too long? where you think there's something wrong here, and um, does adding extra EDTA help? Uh, good questions. Uh, I'll answer the second question first. I don't think adding extra EDTA really does anything. Um, you could, in theory, up the concentration, but then uh, you risk over-treatment. Um, so at the concentration, we're talking about 0.5 millimolar. I think there is a relatively large window. Um, you'd probably have to leave it on there for, for quite a while in most cases um, to really over-treat them. Uh, just keep in mind, you know, the longer it's on there, the easier it is it's going to be to break up those clumps, right? So if it is on there for a really long time, you just want to be very gentle with your pipetting and not, and not over-pipette over them um, to break them up too small. Um, so, I mean, that's pretty much the risk you run is just that uh, the, the longer you treat them, the more you treat them, the, the easier it is going to be to break up those clumps. And if the clumps are too small, they're just not going to um, attach well, and they're not going to grow very well afterwards. Um, and if you, if you go and you find that the cells are really just not coming off at all, um, you know, once you've add the, added the media, it's, it's, it's too late to do anything there. But what you can do is, I mean, if they're really just not coming off, you can aspirate the media and... I guess you would have to wash them a couple more times with PBS and then add a EDTA again and treat for another, you know, four minutes and see if they come off. Um, I don't, it, it, it may work, um, but, you know, and just keep that in mind for ne the next time around, you want to make sure to, to treat them for, for longer. And how many cells should a clump have in average? Oh, good question. Um, yeah, that, that's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to look at the clumps and say, hey, that's a 10-cell that's a clump, that's a 100-cell clump. But um, I would say, yeah, probably in the neighborhood of about 100 to 500 cells per clump is, is good. Um, but this is a very, you know, rough estimate because, like I said, you're going to have a hard time looking at a clump and knowing exactly how many cells are in there. Sure. Um, this is slightly different um, kind of question. Um, not strictly within the realm of passaging, but sort of related. Do you count the cells before freezing or for any other reason? If yes, what method do you use? Uh, good question. Uh, we don't normally count the cells uh, simply because, you know, you have to keep PSCs as clumps. And so to count them, you would have to, uh, you know, make them single cells. If you absolutely need a cell count, what you can do is take a small aliquot of your cells that are in clumps further dissociate that to single cells with something like trypsin or triple, count that, and then kind of, you know, extrapolate backwards to see how many cells you have. Um, but, I mean, we find that unless you have a, a really good reason that you need to know the absolute cell number, that, uh, there's no reason to do that. You work more on split ratios, right? Like I was saying, one to six split, one to eight split. When you go to freeze the cells down, um, you'll kind of just have a sense of, of how good your freezing method is, right? I think we normally take, let's say, one... One six well uh, can yield um, probably two to three vials that would then be thawed back into a six well. So it's kind of like a one to three split. 
And, and you'll kind of have to figure that out on your own, like how good is your freezing method and um, what, what split ratio do you need to uh, freeze the cells and then thaw, and then thaw them back. But um, I, I find that counting isn't really necessary unless you're doing something, um, let's say you're going to electroporate the cells or do some method where you do need to have an exact cell number, but in that case, you're going to singularize the cells anyways. Um, so, you know, that, that's, that's, that's when you would do a count. Going back more into the passaging part of it, you mentioned that this is the reagent of choice for essential eight medium. How about Stemflex medium? Uh, sure. So Stemflex, uh, I mean, is when you culture cells in Stemflex, they're gonna you're gonna kind of treat them very similarly to how you would in in Essential Eight. Uh, similar matrices, vitronectin, geltrex, laminin, um, and so your passaging method would also EDTA would work just fine. There may be again, you know, subtle differences in in, in incubation times and um, split ratios that you would use. Uh, you know, going from Essential Eight to Stemflex, it might not be exactly the same between the, the two media. But, uh, but overall, it's the same basic method. Yeah, there does seem to be a difference in the kind of methods that are used with different media, but in this case, it is similar. Um, and to that point, one of our participants is currently using collagenase for passaging their cells. How does EDTA compare to collagenase? Sure. So, um, so I mean, if we were culturing cells on, on feeders, on MEF, uh, we typically use collagenase. That, that works the best. I, would not recommend trying EDTA for cells passages on meth. It's, it's not going to end well. I've tried it and it doesn't work. Uh, but conversely, um, I would not use collagenase for cells cultured feeder free on essential eight. Um, it, it also just doesn't work very well. Um, so, you know, EDTA is going to give you the best results for essential eight, and, and I would say collagenase would probably give you better results for cells on, on feeders. So then, is there ever a situation where you would use a different passaging reagent than EDTA, and what reagent for what application? Sure. Uh, so as I mentioned earlier, um, if there was, if you were using a protocol where you had to take the cells and make them single cells, like I said, let's say you're doing electroporation or flow cytometry, fact sorting, uh, things like that, where the cells have to be single cells, um, then you need to use a different passaging reagent. For regular passage, you want to keep the cells as clumps. You're, you're going to use EDTA for uh, cells in essential later stem flex. But uh, when the cells need to be single cells for a specific protocol, um, I would recommend using uh, triple. Um, that's that's the one we use the most. Uh, it's it's pretty gentle on the cells, and, and it'll give you good results um, if you do have to make your cells single cell. Somewhat related, um, some of the protocols on our website mention Versine. Sure. Uh, there's a question on how that is different from EDTA. So Versine is pretty much an EDTA solution. Um, it's just a ready, it's a ready made solution. So the solution I'm using here is a 0.5 millimolar. That was made from a bottle that was 0.5 molar. I just diluted it in PBS and sterile filtered it. Uh, Versine is, is like a ready to use solution. It's, I believe it's 0.48 millimolar, uh, you know, pretty close. Um, and uh, but but it, it's just it's pre-made, right? You don't have to dilute it. It comes sterile, ready to use. Uh, the one thing I would say is that it, it should uh, most EDTA solutions are just shelf stable. You can leave them out on the you know leave them out at room temperature. Versine is actually recommended to be stored in uh, in the deli at you know two to eight degrees. So just make sure you warm it up to room temperature before you use it if you are going to use Versine. If you add it cold that's obviously going to change your incubation times, right? And do you recommend using Revitacel or a ROC inhibitor during routine passaging? Which is better? Um, so I, I don't think, we tend to avoid using ROC inhibitor unless we need it. So if you're, if you're doing regular passage with EDTA, you should not need to use either a ROC inhibitor or Revitacel. Um, but if you are, as I said, doing those protocols where you need uh, your cells to be single cell, then, um, then you are going to need something like a rock inhibitor or a Revitacel. Um, you know, Revitacel is, is easy to use. I mean, it, it comes, you just add it to your media. Uh, you, you can use a rock inhibitor. Um, they'll probably have very similar effects, but I, I would say uh, Revitacel is a little bit easier to use uh, since it's ready to, ready to go, already sterile. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I would recommend only using Revitacel for your cultures when you're plating them as single cells. You leave it in there for 24, maybe 48 hours after you plated them, and then you move on to 
to a, a media without, without that in there. There's a question here. What happens if the cells stay too long in EDTA? I think uh, you've kind of covered, but you can reiterate. Sure. Um, you know, I mean, I've actually, I, I've, I've experimented with this. I mean, you could leave them in there for probably half an hour at room temperature, and in most cases, they wouldn't, they wouldn't necessarily start floating on their own. Um, but it, it, you know, when you go to harvest them, they'll just come off like instantaneously. And then I think even if you're being very gentle, you'll end up with clumps that are extremely small. So I mean, I don't think it's going to destroy your culture, but it will probably uh, recover a lot slower, and you might have a, a longer period of time between you know, between cultures initially as they as they kind of recover from being you know clumps that are too small. So we just received a comment that vitronectin increases cell adherence, or I guess the question in general would be, um, would there be a difference in how in the culture and dissociation protocols with the different matrices? Sure, uh, that's a good question. Um, I think in general, you're not going to see huge differences. Um, I, would, I see more differences between different cell lines than I do between you know one cell line on different matrices. So. Um, you, I mean, keep it in mind if you're going from vitronectin and then you're, and then all of a sudden those cells are, say, on Geltrex and you're going to harvest them. It it may take longer. Uh, keep that in mind. But in general, I, I don't see any huge differences in incubation times uh, with one cell line on, on, on different matrices. Somewhat related, um, there is uh, someone in the audience who has seen some cells still sticking to the plate after flushing. Um, how do they fix that, or is that really an issue? Um, good question. So uh, it depends. Um, if if those cells are not differentiated cells, um, then yeah, it may mean that just next time you're uh, you should treat a little bit longer uh, with the EDTA. You know, uh, maybe thirty seconds, a minute longer incubation time to try and get them up. Um, but you know, it, it may also be that. EDTA will tend to preferentially lift up pluripotent cells first, and then and then differentiated cells. So, um, you know, when you when you treat it for the right amount of time, it might actually leave differentiated cells behind. So, I'm not sure in this case what cells are being left behind, but but you can kind of use this to to try and clean up your cultures by by you know releasing and removing the the, the pluripotent stem cells first, and and kind of leaving the differentiated cells behind. Here's another good one. Um, one of our participants is worried that they don't flush the cells right. It's a, it's a bit of a vague question, but I get what they're asking. So Chad, how do you know what is too strong or too weak in terms of the flushing pressure? And how many times is there a specific number that you kind of aim for? Sure. Um, yeah, I mean, this is one of those things you kind of just have to get a feel for with experience. Uh, the more you do it, the more comfortable you'll get. Um, I, you know, there's not a hard set number of, you know, five times is perfect and, and six times is too many. Um, again, you'll, you'll kind of just get a sense for it as you, as you, as you do this. Um, you know, I, I mean, it, and like I said, I mean, the incubation time kind of dictates how things are going to go. If you've incubated properly, when you go you sh to, to lift the cells up, you shouldn't have to use that much uh, pressure and they, they should kind of just gently come off. Um, so if you're not seeing that, I would try to increase your incubation time next, or uh, yeah, your EDTA incubation time the next time you try to pass your cells. And you know, it's up and down, how many times is, is right? I mean, just minimize it as much as possible, right? Um, and, and really, it's just kind of, you have to just get a feel for it. And one last question. After four minutes in EDTA, if the cells are not lifted, do we just eyeball the time increments? Can we just eyeball the time increments? So sure. Just keep looking. Yeah, I mean, that's where I, I was trying to say when you look at the cells, say they're still in the EDTA and you want to look at them and decide if they're ready, it, it's very hard to know just by looking at them if they're ready. Um, so I, you know, you can, you can certainly try to, um, if they're not coming off easily, I would say just next time, yeah, add 30 seconds. If they still don't come off easily, Add 30 seconds next time. Keep going like that. Um, but, but I, yeah, it's, it's very hard to look at them and say, oh, I need 30 more seconds. They don't look right. Um, it, I know, like when you're doing collagenase, you can kind of look at them and get a better sense. EDTA, it's, it's a little more, it's a little more uh, subtle. Got it. 
So um, thank you, Chad, for your responses, and thank you all for your participation. I hope this has been a great learning experience. If we didn't get to your question, we'll try to address them afterwards by email, or you can ask our experts at their exhibit hall or technical support chat boxes. If you need to see the demonstration again, this video will be available on demand, along with other trainings and scientific talks for 24 hours of stem cells. Please enjoy the rest of our event today and continue to take advantage of the resources even afterwards. Thanks. Bye.